What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Caesar with Caesar Gets Crypto, and we are talking about Bitcoin Cash today. Shout out to the Dragon Riders and the Clan of the Dragon. We are riding the Red Dragon, my friends. It's been it's been quite the ride, quite the wild ride indeed. We have been bucked off of the Green Dragon, and we are coming down riding this Red Dragon down to the uh, the fiery abyss of nothingness. No, I'm just kidding. I don't think we're going to go to zero. I don't think that we're going to go lower than the slow. I do think we go lower than this slow. But probably not by too much. Hopefully not by too much. Um, if we do, whatever, you know, good. It's it's a cheaper opportunity for us to buy, right? That that's really all it should be. If you're if you're still holding whatever, it's just an opportunity to buy more at lower prices. Um, this one comes to us as a request of Nixer. Nixer, we're doing this one for you. I'm sorry, I forgot to reply to you. I'm gonna reply to you now. Doing it now, my man. Thanks for the request. Yes. Okay, so, so looking at this thing, you know, that's, I mean, in a nutshell, that's kind of really all I have to say, right, is I don't think that we're done going lower yet. Um, generally, whenever you get into the oversold zone, that's not the end of it, especially like we have our pivot right here. This is our low. Let's go back and look at any time. So right here, we had a low pivot. And we did turn around from here, right? We did turn around. And ultimately, we went lower, sure. But this is kind of different circumstances. I wouldn't compare a pivot like this. If we saw a pivot like this over here, I would bet we do go higher. Um, you know, but but again, something like this, you'd want to see it get above the 50 if, if that was to be the case. We could pivot. We could go even higher um, up to like the 40 area and still be in this overall downtrend in the RSI. Um, you go back before, you know, even here, you had your pivot just in the oversold zone, just in the oversold zone. But back here, right here, whenever you first got into the oversold zone, you saw your first pivot was right here, and you actually went lower. Even here from the low itself, the low in the RSI that is, right? I'm going to zoom it in so it's easier to see. You can see that you prevailed lower in prices, you know, shortly after. You went up, you went sideways, and then you went down. Here, your first pivot right here, you went up. You went down. You had another pivot. You went you went sideways and then ultimately lower. Here we go back. First pivot is right here, right here on this day, and you did go lower. Then you went up a little bit higher, and then you went lower. First pivot right here, even you went lower, at least on a closing basis. You know something like this. If you saw this and you didn't actually go lower, I would be okay with calling this you know a move up because we did get bullish divergence, right? So that if we see something like that without going lower in price. That'll be okay. Lower closes, but not lower in price overall, would be a good thing as far as like building bullish divergence goes. Here, you get your first pivot right there, lower, right? Here, you got a pivot and you went higher, but that was also, you know, kind of coming off of this. It's like a double bottom. Um, but just generally speaking, guys, that's kind of the nature of most charts. Whenever you get into the oversold zone, you don't, you don't, it's not the end of it right then and there. You tend to move up or move sideways a little bit, let this cool off, come up a little bit, and then you go lower in price, but you form a higher low in the RSI, giving you some bullish divergence. You don't need to form bullish divergence, right? You can have a slightly lower low in the RSI, I guess, well, you did form it over here. That's not a good example. Let's see, uh, you know, here, well, you still formed it. I don't know. There's there's times where you don't need to form bullish divergence here. Technically, you did not form bullish divergence, right? You had like a double bottom, but this was a lower low on the RSI and the price, and you still went up. So, so you don't need to form bullish divergence. It's just more of like a classic thing that happens. And uh, what I'm trying to get to is, you know, the last couple times that we were in the oversold zone like this, we did have immediate pivots where generally we don't. Are we going to do it? Are we going to do what's unlikely to happen as we've done it the last two times? Or are we overdue for something that's more regular? I think we're overdue for something that's more regular. And I really do just expect that we go lower because, you know, from bottom to top, for Bitcoin Cash, not for every chart, but for Bitcoin Cash, this does kind of make sense for an area for it to find a low at. But, you know, there's not a lot of volume here. This is a pretty big exchange being on Coinbase. I think that we still do go lower and it's pretty classic to find a low between the 618 and the 69 area, the little sweet spot as I like to call it, as I've called it a few times on this channel. We'll go back and kind of validate why that's a thing. Um, if you've been watching the channel, you know across many charts that I've shown that, that that spot has been proven time and time again to be a zone to uh, look for. But let's just see here from this low to this high, you know, if, if you were to have bought at the 6.9, you would have missed the absolute low, but you still would have bought in at a good time. So it went a little bit lower than that. That's not really a good example, but still a good example of how low you could go, right? Um, if we go from that low, that first low there, to the top, 
you bounced right off the 618. You actually went right into the sweet spot between the 618 and the 69. You bounced right here first, a little bit lower. And if we look at this on a, uh, I wonder if we go back on a daily, we go back that far, actually. I'm kind of curious, let's see. No, that's not what I wanted. Um, you know, here, maybe not. So you didn't get oversold, whatever. Oh wait, right, right, this was the area. So you came and you bounced just below the 50, like we are now. You were oversold, you even came up, you even got above the 50, had a good looking RSI, but guess what? Just a lower high and you went down to form a lower low and then you had your higher high that just got obliterated afterwards, but still. Um, and then this move really came off with some bullish divergence as well, but you went again into that sweet spot. I'm gonna kind of continue doing this, this kind of sweet spot analysis here, right? Um, just to show that Bitcoin Cash does like to do this. Um, and this is why you guys, I've, I've been able to accurately kind of I wouldn't say accurately, but but you guys know. If you've been watching the, the channel, you know that I've been waiting for a move, something like this. Um, even when we were all the way up here, I've been waiting for a move that's even lower than this. But the minimum range I gave it was to 185 to 135, somewhere in there. Um, if we go here from top to bottom, this time it's an upward move. We actually did not. We did not get into the sweet the sweet spot, actually. So that's, that's kind of a bad example. That's okay, though. Um, let's see here. Maybe here from top to low. Again, not in the sweet spot, right in the 0.5 area. Again, just kind of showing that this could be, it could be a low, but I don't think it is, personally. Um, if we go from the top, or maybe it was this one, I'm sorry. Maybe low to high here, yeah. Bounced right off of it, right in the sweet spot there, right off the 6.9 area. Um, I know that this one already is the 3.82 area. That's like the shallowest retracement we've ever seen. Um, even if we were to take from this low to this high here, you can see that we did, again, bounce off in this 6.9 area as well, right? So from that low to this high, 6.9 area right there, and then from that low to this high, bounce right off that same kind of zone. And then here, from top to bottom, you can see that we had a rejection right in this zone again, then held the 382 and went higher. Um, I don't know, that might be the last like example, but just kind of showing that this is something that it likes to do, you guys. It definitely likes to do that. Just above the 0.5, again, showing that this, this could be an area that we could bottom at, but I'm not really expecting that personally. I wonder if we went from low here to high here. You know, you did have a little bit of resistance here or support in this area, right? Still a little bit just in between the 618 and the 0.5 like we are kind of now. You went up and then you went lower. Um, yeah, I don't know. That that might be all the examples that, that I have available. Let's see, from top to bottom there. Yeah, this went all the way up to the uh, 886. But you kind of did find a lot of turbulence in this sweet spot as well. So anyways, anyways, without any more of that, looking at this from bottom to top, it is completely possible that we have bottomed here. But pairing that with the fact that we are oversold in the daily, we are in a firm downtrend in the RSI, until we break this downtrend in the RSI, and even then, I'm, I'm still not completely convinced, but until we break this downtrend in the RSI, I would very much be convinced that we do have lower to go. We didn't have a whole lot of volume come in, and I would, you know, with this kind of bounce, I would expect more volume to come in personally, but it doesn't need to. It's, you know, volume's kind of weird that way. I mean, it is a lot of volume relative to this range, but still not a lot of volume, you know, compared to this stuff over here. Um, I wonder, I wonder, let's see, on the weekly, you are right now, if you were to close this week at this price or lower, you are below the 50, which on, on the daily, the 50 is not that significant, but on the weekly, it looks to be a little bit more significant. Um, probably again, actually just a little bit above the 50. I don't know. Hard to say. A little bit of significance here, significance here, significance in the zone, significance there, bounced off it there rejected it there held support on it here i think i think going below it would not be a good thing and that would promote uh, lower price action and then furthermore you know we do have uh these highs on a closing basis like right down here at about 138 which again is coincidentally right at that sweet spot zone right between the 618 and the 0.69 are we done could we go lower you know yes to both of them we could we could be done we could be going lower. It's hard to say, but my gut and my just like my overall feeling of this thing would be that we're not going to do the unusual thing three times in a row. We're probably not going to just pivot right out of here, right? We're not going to 
pivot right out of here. We've already done that twice. I don't think we're going to do it for a third time. I think we're going to do the more common thing, which is we just got in the oversold zone. We're going to come up, probably test previous areas of support for resistance, which is at about 220. We could move all the way up there. We might not. We might not even get that high. We could move up only to about 215. Um, we could reject this area right here at 190, about 195, the 236 area, and go lower as well. We don't have to even go up that high. But again, don't get too excited if we make a move from the current price up to, you know, even up like 21% from here. All that would be is overall a lower high. And after forming lower highs, I love to say this, right? After, after forming a lower high, what do we do next? We form a lower low. So, you know, this trend line has been holding. It's been prevailing. This is, that'd be like a 20% move from the current price. I would expect that if we saw something like that, if we didn't at least come back down for a lower low, that we would come back down for a higher low. So even if we don't get, you know, even if, even if we miss the chance at being able to buy down here and it doesn't go lower, I think that there will be signs in the chart We'll have a higher low. We'll have different readings in the RSI, you know, maybe more volume coming in and stuff like that. That will suggest that we go higher. But at the moment, we don't have that. And, you know, a good old saying that I learned from uh, Eric Crown on, on Eric Crown's crypto trading channel. Um, you guys should really follow him, man. He's a good – If it might be a little bit much. If you don't know TA, it might, it might seem like a foreign language, and he's pretty fast. And he's a little bit different of a personality, but he's I, – I like him a lot, man. I think he's a very smart person. I've learned a lot from him personally. And uh, as he likes to say, you know, the trend is your friend until the trend is over or until the end of the trend. And right now we are firmly in a downtrend in the price, firmly in a downtrend in the RSI. I have no reason to believe it's over just yet. I think we're getting there. I think we are getting there, but I don't think it's over yet. If we're looking at the four hour time frame, look at this, man. Just as I was saying a few days ago, um, or maybe was it two days ago? It was two days ago now. Um, we probably moved sideways and slightly up so that we give this a break because this four hour RSI was very low. We've rejected the over, the oversold zone, right? We came into it or out of it and we rejected this area. You know, if we continue to go down like this, this would, this would scream for a more immediate move down. I was thinking that by Monday we'd move down and that we'd at least move up a little bit more than this. But right now, guys, this is looking pretty weak. This definitely does look pretty weak. Um, not encouraging at all. But, you know, maybe, maybe, we just have a close below this one here. Maybe we don't go lower than this price. We do form some overall bullish divergence and then we continue to go up from there and then move sideways for like a week or so and then have our final move down. I don't know, you know, it's hard to say, but at the moment, at the current moment, I don't think that, we, uh, that we've bottomed yet. I have a solid stack of cash waiting to buy in at 145 on the dot. And I have not moved that, man. As, as exciting as this day was, as close as we got, as much as we went up, you know, which wasn't too much, right? From a low to a high point, we went up 17%. I mean, I'd love to make 17%, but that's not a whole lot, you know, in, in comparison. This thing did 36% in one day before, so I'm not going to flip out over half of that coming off of a low like this. Um, you know, I'd want to see some more confirmation before closing my buy order at 145 and buying up higher. So I'm not convinced yet. I do think we're going lower. That's my overall opinion. I will make another video later today. Um, and yeah, if you guys like the video, leave a thumbs up, subscribe to see more. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.